Welcome to Wiz Fan and welcome to another edition of the Weekly Rant. Today I'm joined by Baseball Lover and the Cheater. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi. So guys, last week I wasn't there. It was Cheer Dude and Baseball Lover carry on the show without me. And it went pretty successful according to the views on uh, our listenings on SoundCloud, which I'm happy. So uh, glad to see you guys can do without me. But uh, the Tour de France was a real experience and I'm glad to be back and co- to be controlling these goofballs. But now that the Tour de France is over, there are other races and other things going on. We have officially hit August 1st, which means that you can now do transfers. According to the UCI rules, you cannot do any public transfers before August 1st. So now, people can start transferring. But first of all, I want to talk about San Sebastian. The, uh, the classics that nobody can ever pinpoint the real favorite of. But walk me through the race, baseball over. What happened in that race? Um, There was one early attacker. That was Charuca of Cajarual. And then there was midway, there was some more attacks, but they all got caught going to the final climb. And uh, first attack on the final climb was uh, was Kolopnev. And then he got caught by Nieve, then Nieve got caught by Rodriguez, and Rodriguez got caught by Valverde. And then they were all together, Gates, Nieve, uh, Malama, Valverde, and Rodriguez, until Yates crashed, and Valverde got a gap. Uh, and then you never saw Valverde again, which was kind of stupid. I don't know why they let him get a gap ever. Well, there are also some conspiracies talking about the moto guys or the moto cameras giving him some drafting. I mean, there are pictures on Reddit where the right before he went away, the camera was filming him, and Valverde was right up on his uh, tail. So uh, Yeah, that could easily have been it, because I did see the cameras were very close. Mm-hmm. So they were talking about some moto drafting, but there was never any uh, penalized, well, penalizement from that. So I guess the commissioner said that it wasn't really that bad, and eventually Valverde might have won it, which is also very true in my book. Because what I didn't understand from that is Valverde attacked away from a group where he's obviously the favorite. What do you think of a move like this, Tudor? We've seen it more and more in the past where guys like Peter Sagan have to attack even though they are the favorite. Yeah, it really depends on the situation, obviously, but you know. If Valverde is the favorite and uh, he had, uh, he attacks, obviously, I think... He, I, I don't know. In my opinion, riders aren't as aggressive as they should be these days. I feel like riders could be more aggressive. But uh, for Valverde, if he attacks early, I think, you know, it, it's, it's all on him. I mean, he's had the tour and a lot of guys after the tour, um, like straight after the Grand Tour, most of the guys are in really good touch. And these one-day races, they normally really do well in. So... Um, you know, if he thinks he has it in the least, you know, attacking isn't a bad move. And because uh, a lot of times in the one-day races, people we don't see, uh, we don't notice that much. Is uh, a lot of teams have confusion, uh, like confusion, chasing a guy. Like no one really wants to pace, and when like guys behind hesitate, I mean the attackers get a huge advantage. You know? mm-hmm. I was just very surprised to see Valverde doing that. Of all the guys that are in that group, seeing Alejandro Valverde attacking, but I guess he. Uh... He looked at the situation and he's like, so what happens if one of the other guys attack? Will I be able to both catch him and win the stage? And I guess he said no, and that was why he attacked. And uh, uh, one of the betters that I followed on Twitter, by the way, guys, if you didn't know, I'm a huge uh, betting fanatic. I've had issues in the past. And uh, I follow guys on Twitter <laughs> who, uh, who bet a lot on different stages. And they're very, very smart at this. They all call themselves tipsters, but anyone can call themselves tipsters. Wow. But... This guy put fifty bucks on our Honda Valverde to win at eleven to one. So he now, won. Now I want to know who made the odds at eleven to one for Valverde. No clue, but that's just how the stage was. Like nobody, like Classic at San Sebastian is the one stage of the year where nobody can really pinpoint a favorite because it can be anything. Like who expected Tony Gallopin to win last year? Nah, I didn't. But I also expected Dan Martin to do well. He was a like he was a higher favorite than Valverde was, by the way. Just telling you. So, Where? On, uh, I think I can it was tell- Betfair, yeah. Uh, I can tell you, guys who come off Grand Tours are generally more superior in the one-day races like that. Like, if I mean, you see, if you, Martin's ridden well, one race. Yeah, I know. Like, if you compare like someone like uh, like a Walter uh, mm-hmm. and World Championships to something like this, it's pretty similar. Guys who win the World Championships always ride the Walter. And last year was like the first year in ages that a person who won the world champs didn't go to the water so having a grand tour like under your legs like and then going to one day races apparently, it, apparently it's like a yeah. huge difference maker like it is like you have that much you're that much stronger than the guys who haven't like ridden as much like a martin or something like did that did cavendish so. go to the vuelta when he wanted in denmark know. yes um, what, what's the point he went to the zero vuelta and tour that year what 
What? That's crazy, because... What did he do at the Welter? Did he just get a free ride for 21 stages, or, or he left, like, halfway through? I'm pretty sure he banned in, like, halfway through. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because there's really no merit for a guy like Cavendish to go to the Welter. Isn't he doing this year as well? There's I don't know. A, no, it's Kittle. Isn't it Kittle that's going? Farah like, could be doing it. Oh, he's so not going to do anything. He's going he's gonna to be a havoc in the peloton. I watch out. If You, you would never take for us real. <laughs> Elia Viviani can sign under that. Don't do that, by the way. Uh, speaking about signing, guys, I have a real question. I have a quick question to ask you guys. Um, some of you guys might have known that I was gone last week and I was in the Tour de France or I was at the Tour de France getting autographs and talking <laughs> to people. But uh, there is one autograph that I can't pinpoint. My uh, fo- uh, my uh, cameraman, uh, Valerie, did not pick this up on the camera and f- my memory is just gone. I normally have a really good it's memory. Valerie. That's my uh, cameraman. But, uh, I had a cameraman <laughs> with me. Yeah, I had a cameraman with me. But he was horrible. But uh, I don't I don't remember it was a hate who this was. was. So on, you'll see on the screen right now there's a picture of this autograph. If you can figure out this is, you will save my day. It's like, if you guys remember last time I went to a uh, of Denmark, I had the, uh, the Bell King ride I never guessed. It was Mark Goes that you guys pointed out. And if you can do that again this time, you'll save my day. I did some research, you, but I can't figure it out. You also called people Fletch at the Tour of Denmark. <laughs> Do you, you remember which team, uh, which the, team the rider was from? Or? Uh, no, I do not remember. I simply do not remember. I mean, it's uh, I can remember everything except that one rider. Like, it's... Like I went. Wait, it was so, probably a Britannia rider or something. Let's see. Look, okay, you want to hear how I went? First of all, I went to the. Uh, I went to Jean Christophe Pirot. He was the first guy to get out of his van, out of his bus. I went there. <laughs> I got his autograph. Then went down to the Tinkoff bus. Got Mikel, uh, uh, got Mick Rogers, Mikel Murkoff. Went back to the Giant Shimano. Got the uh, Albert Timur and Corn de Court. I went out and I found uh, Ramus Navadaskus. I got him. I got to talk to him. I found Christian Meyer. I found Julian Simon. I found Anna Demar. I found uh, Brice Villieu. I found Rowan Bardet. Oh my god, you got some big names. Uh, I think that was... Luca Paulinho, I also got to talk about his beard. Talked about his beard. But there's just one guy I just don't know. I mean, I just... I can't pinpoint him anywhere. It's so weird. But if you guys can pinpoint him, thank you very much. It was, it was, it was Julian Dean. Oh my god. If only I saw him. I was actually camping outside the Orica bus to see if I can uh, find like uh, some of these guys. That's how I found Christian Meyer, but Dan Jones never came out, so I couldn't yell dickhead at him because Cycling Hub and Dan Jones have some issues because Dan Jones thinks he is the god. I mean, he thinks he's the fucking uh, god of all god uh, of religions. Dude, he used to steal footage from the Cycling Hub, and when we told him to give us some uh, credit for this, he's like, no, I own the sport. <laughs> no, no you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Orca Greenwich is not the best team in the sport, neither you have the best PR management in the sport. They, they don't even have a climber. <laughs> it's Satra I guess. Satra Mita, yeah. Adam Yates and Sami Yates are both coming up soon, but it's very interesting. But I think that earlier in the video, I uh, let's, let's make a jump, guys. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that we've hit August 1st. It's currently like August 3rd. And uh, it's time to make some transfers. And I know baseball ever really wants to discuss this one. Rohan Dennis went to the mediocre team BMC. Discuss this one. What do you think about this? Well, I I normally wouldn't think anything of it, except he is now on BMC. Like, he already left. Uh, Garmin Shark. And he just, mid-season, we, there was just an article. He leaves Garmin, he's at BMC now. Like, what? What? What's, what's like, wrong with that, just... though? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it now is that you're going to see a lot of a lot of teams now opening that door where if if people could be organizing transfers to happen in different uh times of the year and the rules could even change and I I never like that aspect. I like to see my riders at least in the team jersey for the entire year. If you have a contract for 3 years, it shouldn't just be null and void. Because you made a transfer. But it ran out. Just, that's the point. Of, it didn't run out. It was until the end of the year. But since he said he was going to sign, they figured, well, his points will probably go there. So let's just trade him now. It, it doesn't. It, it's. It, it opens up a door, and this could happen a lot more often now. And well, it's not in PCM. So now, what is the cyanide team going to do? They can only do so many things. <laughs> I like how you just turned that like one eighty. Like, hey, so cyanide, they're screwed. Oh, not realistic <laughs> enough. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't see the, I, I don't see the the difficulties in this or the problems. What do you I, think, you? I, I actually really like it. I mean, it's not in my opinion, it's not that bad. Like, I hate watching guys like perfect example last year, Rigbert to uh, Uran uh, in Team Sky. He probably deserved the leadership role at the Walter, and then like he knew he wasn't riding Sky next year, so 
you know, he decided to just do whatever he wanted to do in Sky, just went their separate ways, and it, it doesn't make for, you know, good racing, uh, because the guy just doesn't care, really, because... Well, it's you know, your fault what, if what, you don't have any team loyalty. <laughs> no, it's it's not really team loyalty, it's all, it, it's more of, like, a motivation, I guess, if you're, um, you know, you know, you know you're not going to ride for the team next year, and they, no, you're not riding for the team next year, so they won't put you in big races, um... That happens a lot. You know, it doesn't make for good racing. Even in sports as well, you see in other sports where you know uh, someone's going to leave. I know in rugby we have here guys uh-huh. like signed well, before. Go- it just doesn't make it fun. I mean, in, just in have, stick it to sports, NBA where you can trade. Yeah, just trade them. <laughs> there are trades. But in this, it isn't a trade. You're basically just giving up a rider, which is not. I guess. But there's actually one uh, one uh, similar uh, scenario to this, because you were saying that riders who already have a team don't ride their best, and it's not fun to watch. Lars Boom. I know that the Danish commentators are pointing out several times that Lars Boom was a dick to Bakken Malma, and was never helping him. Like, in the mountains, Bakken Malma needed some protections on the flat roads up to the mountains. Lars Boom would already be in the group so he didn't give two shits. But... We later found out that he actually signed for Astana. Like, he already had the contract down before the tour with Astana. I mean, they can't oh say that God. publicly, but... That's why he was freaking working with... Uh-huh. That's why he's working oh with... Oh, my God. That is... I, I think there should be a penalty for that. For, like, showing obvious favoring towards a team that you have signed for before uh-huh. the transfer yeah. date. Uh, and I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often than people even... In the uh, what's it, World Championships last year, yeah, Valverde and uh, Rodriguez were in the same nation, but Rui Costa and Valverde were in the same team, and some people were making like whispering that they were working together or something well, like that. So, if though, yeah, and that's I true. Work together, dude. I would not. If I had Rodriguez in my team, screw that. I would not work with Rodriguez. No, like if, if, well, he was ahead. If, yeah, and like even when uh, Contador a couple of years ago in the tour with Sammy Sanchez, they apparently were good friends, and mm-hmm. apparently they were working together. So, and yeah, it, it, then we come that back to that talk well. again. You know, yeah, yeah, it, it's cycling. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. Yeah, I mean, it does. Like I don't, I don't remember how many times, but it does actually happen a lot because. There are multiple times where this guy, this a big GC guy, says, "If you pace for me right now, I'll offer you a contract at the end of the season." That happens a lot in the in the GC, uh, pe- uh, at least in the peloton. At least from what I hear from the writers and the commentators and the journalists and stuff, I hear that happens a lot. I guess we can't pinpoint it because it's technically illegal, but I mean it does happen. Uh, another writer who has left, but I don't think it's as controversial. Does that mean that Astana got a one, two, three on that stage? Uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> And uh, Lars Boom could have just paced uh, Nibali and uh, Forsyth to the finish line and gotten them like four minutes maybe. But then it might have been a little bit too obvious. But Lars Boom already had a uh, contract signed before the tour even started. Why would so. Lars Boom go to Asana of all teams? Louis so. Westra. Louis Westra is the entire reason. Him and uh, those two are good friends. Their They're girlfriends are good friends. No, if you, if, you follow, if you follow them on Twitter, they're girlfriends. They tweet each other. The only reason I see this is because... They tweet each other because they're... Yeah, actually, I only tell you when they're about the girlfriends. <laughs> no, it's because other. pro tour He's Astana. No, that's not tweet, fair. So. That's not fair. The pro team Astana, their Twitter, retweets the girlfriend's tweets. It's so stupid. I, I, the, the PR guy at, uh, at Astana needs to figure out how to actually act in public. Like, he literally retweets like Andrine Schneider, I think, Las Boom's girlfriend's name is. So stupid. Oh, it's Wester's girlfriend. I'm not sure. It's it's one of those, and they like pre- retweet whatever they say. Yeah, I don't know about that. But I was yeah. trying to make the the cut over to uh, Nasser Bohani leaving FTJ. Uh, in a longer period, he's been very unhappy about being at FTJ. Uh, the guys at FTJ have been favoring Demar over Bohani. Who do you guys think is the better sprinter, Bohani or Demar? You know. A lot of people say the uh, quite possibly be true, but I, I, I don't mind Bohani's um, mentality, the way he goes about sprinting as much as I hate him. I mean, I hate his mentality, but I also admire it because you got to have that killer instinct to win, I feel like. it. And, um, you know, going forward right now, I think Demar is, but I still think Bohani has the higher upside of the two. Um, not a, it's a really good signing for Confidus. Uh, confidus. Uh, mm-hmm. Also... I don't think a lot of teams wanted Guhani anyway because of the way, obviously, the way he acts. Uh, his personality is not the greatest and could hamper, you know, the young riders around your team if you sign him. So, yeah, you, you don't really want a guy like Guhani, but the things he can do on the bike is pretty damn good as well. So, well, you, well, a team like Kofi, can they pull out a leader train? I, I don't think, I, I like it not because I think 
their leadout train is not going to be great. I mean, they have Petit. Uh, they have like a bunch of mediocre sprinters on their team, but they've always been pretty climbing oriented. But they're going to get a wild card to the tour. They're going to get a wild card from to most of the French races, and they can fully go for him whether it, they have a great lead out train or not. And I, that's why I like this transfer. A lot of times you'll see guys, they, they're complaining about being the second or third sprinter, and then they just go to another team whether they're the second or third sprinter. And it, it doesn't make much sense to me. So I like at least that Buhani, he had an issue. His issue, he resolved. He actually decided to go to a team where that issue was no longer effective. And I think that DeMar in a plain flat sprint would win. Um, as you saw in the French championships, Buhani just couldn't come around him. But that wasn't Buhani, fair, he's, he's, mm-hmm. he's almost just as fast, and he can get over hills faster. Uh, he can get over hills better. Also, he doesn't have as much diarrhea. <laughs> so, I mean, both of them have a huge upside, and both of them, I think, will do very well at their respective teams now that they're at separate ones. I got to say, the the, the t- uh, French National Championships, that uh, comparison isn't fair, though, because Bohani started with a disadvantage. He started on the Mars wheel, meaning that he <laughs> has to catch up one bike length. He's one bike length disadvantage already in the beginning, and he caught like a half of a bike length. A bike length well, you could also say that any rider getting a lead out is also getting a disadvantage. No, because the other guys who follow him go out of the way to make sure that he gets in front of him. Demar would never give up the spot to Bahani. And but, if the Bahani got close, like he would just that if everybody in. That if everybody decided to just let their lead-out man win, then because it's not just that that wouldn't happen. Renshaw <laughs> used to never get out of the way. Cavendish would pop out. But I also think that Renshaw yeah. slowed down. I don't think Renshaw went full speed in the end. I think at one point he realized that... If, if he that could go full speed and still beat Cav, he wouldn't be the lead-out man. I guess. I guess you're making a point. It's true. I still think that it's not fair to uh, compare those two in that sprint because they are not having uh, like the same okay, terms. Okay, fair, it's fair enough. Well, well talking about lead-out trains, you know, Confidence, they're never going to have a good enough lead-out train to compete against OPQS or any of those teams. But, you know, Buhani, he doesn't really need one. It, it's all about having a guy... One guy who can help you, someone like a Kevin Razor did for Kakar, mm-hmm. and that's all Buhani needs. Like, you, you look at your car, they're never going to have a lead out train, but they can, it'll be handy if they have a guy like Kevin Razor who can get Kakar, like, in there, at least get a good sprint, you know, pull in uh, someone like a Kwiatkowski when he was attacking, something like that. Uh, that's all confidence needs at the moment, I think. They don't need yeah. a bunch of guys. Confidence yeah. is a big spender so far of the transfer season. So far, they've gotten Van Bilsen, Van Steen, Steve Chernell, Greg. Uh, Geoffrey Soup, Dominique Rollin, Jonas Elstrand, Stefano uh, I think, Rossetto. I think that they're going for Pro Tour the season after this. Oh. I guess so. What do you think about this baseball over? How do you like this lineup? Do you think uh, Van Steen and Bohani will be a deadly combo? Um, I think that uh, Van Bilsen is going to win all the combo classics for them. So now they can get wild cards to there and win them because he's Van Bilsen and he can do that. And I think that Van Steen will be a great lead out man for Bohani. Or he can he can win the continental races sometimes. So, yeah, I, I think they have a good lineup, and this is probably the best Kofidis lineup in a long time. Now, I don't know if they're what they're doing with their contenders, or they're not real contenders, just they're like Navarro's. I'm pretty sure he's leaving. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terame, I don't know what they're doing with him. Capel he's going to Astana. Is leaving. Um, Terame is going to Astana. It's been heavily yeah, rumored. Angry. So I'm pretty sure they're losing all of their mountain guys. So there's definitely a downside, but I feel like they've their mountain guys have never really been able to do anything with more than top ten anyway. So it's better to just switch your focus completely mm-hmm. to something that you can do well. I agree. I like I like their change. I like their like transformation from a mountain team to more of a sprinter team. I, I, I like it, but there's going to be a while before they become FTJ because I think FTJ is the only French team that has it correctly. They have a mountain guy and a perfect sprint team or a, a sprint lead out. So it's going to be a while before they transform into a team like that. But they're making their way up there, and I like the change. They just got to keep on trying until they actually get the right formula. But, Judy, what do you think of the mentality like this? Like, you rarely ever see someone go out and buy this many riders from different yeah, teams. Yeah, like, I'm just looking at the list. I'm like, uh, did I, like, think of just get a new team with confidence and start, like, finding more <laughs> riders? Or... <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's weird. Like, who also knows? They might off. have a new... 
guy uh, wanting to take over or something. I don't know. They might have a new manager for next year who wants a different scenery. I mean, that's quite possibly possible. I mean, they haven't really done anything quite of late. And, you know, getting a bunch of new guys wouldn't hurt. Get a new group of um, guys. Their sponsor chemistry, never basically. seems to care yeah, how bad yeah. they do. <laughs> I mean, it's going to take a while until they get go back to their days of get, having guys like Carla Hamilton, uh, Oscar Pereira, and those oh, guys. I miss but, him. Yeah. Dude, I miss mm. uh, David Moncuti. Moncuti, yeah. <laughs> I miss him. He used to go in every single breakaway of the tour. Like, he would always be in the breakaway. I actually miss him. He's the kind of writer I'd love because he, he was, like, right up there with the contenders most of the time, but he just didn't give a crap. <laughs> he, he would like if he wasn't gonna be in the break that day, he'd just be like, "Bye bye, Gruppetto time." Exactly. And so it was never really a GC threat, but then he'd come out the next day and like blow away the mountains. It was very fun to watch. He's a very entertaining rider to watch. He's kind of like the Thomas Vauclair, just less annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. see him. It's very exciting, but uh, he didn't want to need to make those l- stupid faces every time he gets in front of the motorbike. Exactly. But before you mentioned that Bohani was kind of the kid that nobody wanted, there's another kid like this, uh, Carlos Alberto Betancourt. Where do you see him going, baseball lover? Because uh, he's definitely not staying at AG2R. He's thinking about leaving. Where do you think, where would he fit in? I don't think he fits in anywhere. And I, I hate to say this, I feel like his career is always, is already going downhill because he just doesn't have the mentality. And he he doesn't have the mentality to be good. He's cocky, he's lazy, and I think that's part of the reason he could be leaving is because AG2R don't want him. AG2R, they wanted him. He was not that injured for the tour. The only reason is that he wasn't willing to rehab and get back into it and train harder and try to make a full recovery for the tour. He never had it. He went back to Columbia so he can party, and (laughs) he has so much potential, but... If AG2R just couldn't control him, and I don't see any team that wants that responsibility, I'm sure he'll get picked up somewhere because he's really talented and he's got a lot of raw talent. But I can't, I don't really know. It all depends on who's willing to take the risk. It's true. Well, what I think is, uh, obviously, he's very talented. We've seen the things he's done. Obviously, you'd be crazy if you're a manager and you don't look, you know, even think about getting bent and killed because he's he's quite a rider and. You know, a team they will fit well in. He well, he needs a manager that has a reputation, someone like a Bjorn Reese. I can definitely mm-hmm. see. You know, having a, a big name like that can change your mentality. He needs an Olaf and... Tinkoff in his life. Oh no, <laughs> those guys who like drink so much vodka together—that would just be not a good recipe. <laughs> they go to like, Oh my god! Imagine uh, betting with Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but I've read enough of uh, writers when they. Uh, Go to uh, Beyond Reese. It's changed their like life. They like he. That guy has such an aura around him that he changes. Well, riders, maybe the if Beyond Reese changes so, teams, no, that so, would never uh, happen. That would there never is happen. no way that I, I can see him fitting there at Tinkoff. Oh my god, that would be there. That would be so stupid. I wait, I, can, I compare uh, Carlos Alberto Betancourt to Johnny Mansell. Those two guys have yeah. so much talent, but they're just both throwing it away on party and unnecessary yeah. things. Exactly. No, it's it's like the same thing, and then you get a Greg Popovich under their belt, and then they start playing, you know. I hope so. Decently. Well, well, we need to see something happen. Well, when Johnny Manziel switches sports and goes to the Spurs, we can talk. <laughs> well, he's got a future wherever he goes, because his Twitter can bring him anywhere. That's, that's how legendary his Twitter is already. But uh, I think there's another, there's an, a few more uh, transfer rumors that I want in before we uh, uh, quit for today. But the Nicholas Roach has been rumored to go to Sky, I am, or Trek, and I think Sky is the most likely one. I heard you like this uh, transfer. Why do you like this too? Uh look, Roach. You know, he, I mean, we've seen him ag to get like a leader's role, and you know, he he's done a bit, and then he hasn't done as much as well. Um, it, at Tinkoff, you know, he he would have been a perfect role f- uh, to support uh, Contador. Um, I know. It, it seems like I don't know. He's he doesn't he's not confident in what he wants to have as a role. I mean, going to Sky, he's not you know he's not going to be a leader by any means of all the you know factory of climbers they got there. So you know, in my opinion, he's going to Sky because Sky have you know they have a lot to offer for a ride. It's the most attractive place to ride right now. Money, the f- money facilities. 
Uh, you got the Death Star bus. Uh, there's everything you want as a writer. So, um, yeah, I can see him going there. To I am cycling. Don't think that's happening. Uh, Trek that, that could quite possibly happen. I can see him going on Trek because Trek are looking for a climber as a leader, and if Roach wants to be a leader, Trek is perfect spot. You know, mm-hmm. same thing with Sky. They got they're a rich team, one of the wealthier teams. You know, they, it's not a bad move going there either. Good. Well, mm-hmm. I in my opinion, it comes down to whether you want more money or more leadership in races. And at Sky, you'll never be a leader, but at, you will get more money. So there's that. Will you? Yeah, yeah. Sky, budget Sky, no, Sky is the most, uh, it's the well spent. They're the richest team, team yeah, in the Peloton. That's right. That's right. The term. They are quite the richest team in the Peloton by a lot. They that's how it's all these guys. Yeah. They, but, uh, uh, but then there's Trek, who are also pretty rich. Uh, they were a rich team at least a couple of years ago when they were Radio Shack Leopard, but now. I don't really know. Are they still a rich team? They could be. And he would get more leadership there. So I want to see him go there because I like him. And I feel like at Tinkoff, he was the kind of guy who, yes, he wasn't really a leader in most races. But you saw him in the Vuelta last year. He got free reign when he showed them that he was riding well. And I, I, I don't see Sky doing that. Fifth in the Vuelta deserves a leadership role, in my opinion. He gets that at Trek, so I want him to go there. Okay, I like that. Um, in the end, there are, there's one topic I want to k- kick off. The, the rest of the transfer rumors are kind of like iffy. I mean, probably not going to happen, and I don't like them that much either. So uh, i got to talk about this. So in the past, we've uh, said that Kroisiger had issues. Right before the tour, he was pulled out because he had issues with his uh, bio passport. And uh, now that he wanted to ride the Tour de Polonia, Oleg Tinkov and Viana Reese said, screw it, let's just try to bring him to uh, the Tour de Polonia while we still have him. Now, UCI decided to ban him and say, you can no longer ride while you're under uh, suspicion. Like, uh, while we look at you, you cannot ride. And I know that uh, Tinkov was drunk last night, and he went out saying that, we want to sue UCI for millions. We bought Kreuziger back in 2011, we asked if there was anything wrong. They said no. They continued on to buying him or getting him. He then went on. And now this is all happening. And, uh, of course, all I think has words has to be taken with a grain of salt. But still, I, I see where he's coming from. It's, it doesn't sound fair to me that they ask and they say no. And then later they turn up and say he was under investigation from since 2011. We just couldn't do anything uh, to, to, uh, about it until now. Why don't you just... Tell all they think of. Uh, I guess it's beyond a reach back then that he's on a suspension, or at least he's uh, looking. He's being looked into. Based on uh, you, dude. What mm. do you think? Uh, you know, it's one of those really strange cases from uh, was it the UCI? You know, again, mm. they never they do things differently compared to you know other big sports associations. But you know, they oh, crazy God, God, how they even let him race? Uh, it seems it baffles me um, to think how he was racing, and you know they got. I think they got, got either got to go one way or the other. You know, let him race or don't let him race. And you know, it's taken them time, but you know they've made their decision. And it's. I mean, if, if he's under that much of a cloud, obviously he's doping. You know, there's no questions about it. If if you've had rumors and suspicions for a couple of years already, you know, it's quite obvious. But. Oh well, yeah. You you see, it is what it is. Exactly. That's a shame, though. But what do you think, baseball? Do you think that uh, all the Tinkoff has the rights to be this mad, or is it his own fault for being a team owner? Well, I think that if if you're gonna sign a rider, you should check their bio passport. Like, I don't know. It wasn't exactly dug deep in there. The the you could easily see it on the bio passport when you take a look at it. So. I mean, it's kind of their responsibility. It's kind of stupid that the UCI waited this long to, like, actually take action. That's pretty rigged. But I still think that once they do, they have the right to do it. And if you dope, then you have the right to be punished. Okay. And on that note, guys, thank you guys for watching. No, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Oh, Lake Tinkoff. Let's talk about this. Oh, the Twitter? Twitter of the week. (laughs) Much. Well, I okay. think Tweet of the Week is his entire, basically, tweet page. On First, Twitter he says, page. oh, by the way, I just signed Wiggins in the Ignatiev. Uh, <laughs> I had two big signings, hashtag Wiggins. 
<laughs> and then uh, uh, it's like, uh, nope, actually, Fruby just called me up and demanded Wiggins back. So I can't take him now. What a shame. And then he's like, actually, for real, I got I got Wiggins. And it's like, nope, just yes. kidding. I didn't get Wiggins. <laughs> Ignatia is real. And then the next week, he's like, actually, I'm starting to think uh, maybe I shouldn't sign Ignatia. I dropped him on the third category last year. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna have to plan B. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like he's like crying. It's so hilarious. He is probably the funniest man ever. So Twitter well, of the if week. You, if you're a cycling fan and you're not following him on Twitter, you've got a problem. Oh. I wouldn't mind having like an alert on the little box like at the side of my com- uh, computer. Like every single time he tweets, it just, <laughs> it just pops up. So that, that would be. Should have the sound of it come with that, like uh, a siren. Oh. Like, uh, 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 tink off just tink off alert. <laughs> Weed of the tink off week. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Also, guys, uh, we haven't talked about it. Commonwealth Games is going on. No, who cares um, about those? Nobody cares. Alex, Alex Dowsett has got gold medal in the top Alex Dowsett? Oh, I, thought, I was going to say road Nobody race. cares. Honestly. Uh, road race is going on right now. To uh, even Wilson, okay. THC uh, Gaming, Steve Smink. I don't think Steve Smink is in that. But, <laughs> uh, and the rest of you guys who are actually in the Commonwealth it's Games, I'm sorry, but... I've so, I've done no research on that whatsoever. But you can talk about it, too. You can fill us in. Oh, I, I can tell you something that's... Definitely true. Is it has been po- uh, planned so poorly um, on the road race? Like I posted a Reddit on it. I said, "Does anyone even have a clue what's going on in the road race?" Because I can't find the profile and I can't even find the start list. Um, and everyone replied with the same thing that they couldn't find crap. Uh, uh, apparently, there was an article on the Guardian, which is a newspaper in Great Britain, that um, they they were thinking about charging. Uh, making fees on uh, like the race so if you want details on the race you want to know the what? start list <laughs> they wanted to charge like 50 bucks or something. what is it like it pay per view it's like it's like pay- someone sent me a, a, a link on reddit from the guardian that they were going to charge for that and I was what's going on what uh, the... it's still right now there's no start list out there but uh, you can go on the Glasgow website and there is like a sort of start list but, yeah, just... okay just, uh, can I read some of these tweets they are hilarious. Go ahead, read some of them before you okay. August 1st. I believe hashtag UCI won't come tonight to my $80 million yacht 6 a.m. as they usually do for my blood test. No need control. I am doped by Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, guys, I like Nico, but he has $2 million. Nah. Then he goes, what about Ivan Basso? No, Ivan Ivan Ivanovich Basso. Yeah. First time I tried to buy him in 2011. Then he says, okay, my account has been hacked tonight. Tomorrow it will be back to me from hackers. How is he talking if it won't be back till tomorrow? <laughs> and then he says, that, no, then then he, he starts cursing out Damiano Kunigo. And then he says, more signing announcements coming tonight. He says, Schleich. UCI President Cookson says, my friend's Team Sky. Does this mean corruption? The previous president also fight, tried to fight like Russians. Okay, then, then finally, finally we get to the big one. He says, if I get 5,000 retweets, I'll sign hashtag at Chris Froome and make him Sir Common Britannia. God saves your queen. <laughs> then, it's, then, he, then he puts some, a picture on his, on his Twitter before he's even announced anything. It says, I'm so happy. Hopefully a new stage of the career for hashtag Sagan. It's a picture of, like, Roach's Tinkoff jersey. And his like portrait with Sagan's face on it. It's poorly cropped as well. <laughs> Other than that, no, guys, oh, go follow Tinkoff's twi- uh, uh, Twitter. Go subscribe to Baseball Lovers YouTube channel. Go subscribe to Judith's YouTube channel. They both do amazing stuff. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for listening on SoundCloud. Please leave a like. Please subscribe, and uh, see you guys next week.